So today I'm going to be talking about human genetic enhancement. I'm going to be focusing on three new technologies, pre-implantation genetic diagnosis, <laughs> stem cells, and cloning. Uh, I agree with most of what these technologies are trying to do. I think that it's a great way to prevent and cure a lot of the world's diseases. Uh, I think the potential for them is too great to ignore, and I think that more research has to be done to make sure that. So, pre-implantation genetic diagnosis, it's a reproductive technology that uses in vitro fertilization to test for genetic disorders and abnormalities before implantation of pregnancy. I believe that PGD is a useful technology that should be pursued because of its enormous potential to prevent diseases. It should be regulated to protect families, but not restricted as to impede research. Um, PGD's most common uses also serve as best potential features, and PGD gives parents the ability to choose their genetic characteristics of their children. PGD's most common use is preventing genetic diseases that could be inherited from parents. Um, it could eliminate any possible birth defects. It can also prevent against abno chromosomal abnormalities. The most common is Down syndrome. Some families choose to use PGD to have a child to use for spare parts for a sibling with a failing disease. It's a more controversial use is uh, trait selection. Through PGD, parents can choose specific traits for their children, such as gender, eye color, hair color, and eventually maybe even intelligence or <coughs> So, there are three steps to PGD. The first step is that the cell is removed from the embryo, which also renders the embryo useless after the cell is taken out of it. The doctor removes the DNA from the CL, the, the cell, and copies it. And the doctor will analyze the DNA to see if it carries the desired traits or not. After an embryo is selected for having the desired traits, it is then implanted into the uterus through in vitro fertilization. So once your parents or a child's parents choose what genetic traits they want and they find an embryo with those traits, they then perform in vitro fertilization so that you'll have that baby and it'll be exactly the DNA that you chose. About 50,000 PGD procedures have been performed worldwide, and the average procedure costs about $19,000. Uh, this is a picture. I know they used it in their sites too. It's extracting a cell from an embryo. The ethical issues of PGD is that people argue that they're playing God, and sometimes if it doesn't work out, you're throwing away a lot of embryos that could be used to make a child, so it's destroying potential human life. So now I'm going to talk about cloning. The two types of cloning are artificial embryo twinning and somatic cell nuclear transfer. <coughs> It's creating the exact genetic copy of an organism's DNA through either embryo artificial twinning is um, basically just creating a twin, it's how it happens naturally, and then the more common type is somatic cell nuclear transfer. It's also called therapeutic cloning and it's the most common form of cloning. It starts with an unfertilized egg that has its DNA removed. The DNA from the individual to be cloned is then inserted into the unfertilized egg and then it is shocked to make it divide and then inserted into a uterus to grow. They did this with Dolly the sheep. So what they did was after <laughs> they took a blank embryo, after they took the DNA out of that, they cloned the exact DNA of Dolly the sheep, and then they put that DNA in the embryo, and then put the embryo into another sheep that then that sheep's child was the exact clone of the other sheep. Uh, therapeutic cloning can be used in cooperation with embryonic stem cell research. And when an egg becomes a blastocyst in therapeutic cloning, which is another process of it, the embryonic material can be removed and then embryonic stem cells can be grown out of it. Essentially, you could clone an individual's organ for transplant. So from embryonic stem cells can become any kind of stem cell. So if you had to have a, a, a transplant for a different organ, you could essentially take DNA from the organ that's failing, insert it into an embryo cell, stem cell, and then that would grow the same organ, but you could do it without defects or abnormalities, which would restrict the chances of you rejecting the transplant. And in 2005, the UN asked all governments to place a ban on human cloning, and some countries like France and Germany favored a total ban on cloning, whereas the UK and the US allow partial cloning, like embryonic therapeutic cloning. So this is stem cells now, and there are also two types of stem cells, which are adult and embryonic stem cells. So adult stem cells are undifferentiated cells found in an organ or tissue with the ability to renew itself to differentiate into either part of an entire organ or tissue 
So adult stem cells are taken from the DNA cells of the specific organ, whereas embryonic stem cells are taken from an embryo and can develop into any type of organ. So adult stem cells can only become that organ or that part of the body that you take it from, and embryonic stem cells can be anything. You can kind of make it into whatever human organ you want. Uh, there, has been, no, there hasn't been a lot of government regulation from stem cell research. In 2001, George Bush placed a ban on all federal funding for embryonic stem cell research, but in 2009, Obama repealed that, but a judge vetoed it, saying that it's not okay because of the previous Bush ban. But today, federal funding can go towards embryonic stem cell research as long as the embryos were taken from the embryo, the embryo stem cells were taken from a private company, and then you can do research on it using federal funding. Um, adult stem cells, the organ growth and transplant, and it's also less likely to be rejected from the body. And embryonic stem cells can become almost any type of cell in the human body. This could potentially cure certain cancers like Parkinson's. Alzheimer's, spinal cord injuries, and a lot of other important diseases. Some ethical considerations. This is a quote from George Bush when he placed the ban, and he said, destroying human life in hopes of saving human life is unethical. She was saying that once you take the stem cells out of an embryo, it dies, and you can't use it to make another child or through IVF or anything. So if you're taking the stem cells out of an embryo and you're using it to make something else, you are destroying potential human life when you could be using that to have another person. So it's kind of saying, you, it's kind of like killing one person to save another, but it's not exactly, because it depends on when you think life starts. It's one of the biggest ethical dilemmas with embryonic stem cells. Another ethical consideration is that there has been no long-term test done on stem cell research or, tamplant, or transplants, and they are oftentimes difficult to control when much more research needs to be done on them. So overall, I am for human genetic enhancement. I think more research and testing has to be done. Uh, I think more people need to be aware of the ethical and social issues that come with human genetic enhancement. I think there needs to be more government involvement, but not so much as to restrict the research or the potential of it. And I think that our society needs to take advantage of the potential to develop technologies that could run and cure some of the world's greatest diseases.